So we're going to do something crazy. We're going to compare four strokes to two strokes. Boom. I know. Your mind just exploded. <laughs> Disclaimer, we gotta do it in a few parts because there's way too much information to cover in one episode. Second disclaimer, we're just talking about enduro slash off-road riding. We are not talking about motocross, we are not talking about supercross. This is strictly for off-road purposes. Should the piston fire every time it comes to the top of the cylinder or should it be every other time? That's all we're asking. When God came down from heaven and personally hand delivered the two-stroke motor to us, he said, don't muck it up. So what do we do? We try to improve upon it by vastly complicating that motor. We added twice as many strokes, like four or five times as many moving parts. We decrease the power per cc while vastly increasing the weight. Great job. We just screwed up perfection. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself not even knowing where to start? That's how we feel. So we're just going to start here with this topic. Myth number one, that somehow four strokes are more powerful. Well, let's just test this theory for a second. Let's take a 254 stroke, put it up against a 252 stroke, and let's have a drag race. And my 254 stroke can beat your 252 stroke. Yeah, and monkeys fly out of my butt. Let's face it, two strokes put out more power. They fire every time the piston comes to the top of the cylinder. Take a look at uh, just Supercross slash Motocross. Do you realize that for the first couple of years when they were transitioning to four strokes in, in Supercross, 450s ran, 454 strokes ran with the 252 strokes? Do you realize that a 252 stroke is very, very close to the same amount of power as a 454 stroke? Yeah, the four stroke is a little bit easier to ride in Supercross because it gets a little bit more traction. It's a little easier to ride. It lets you make more mistakes, but let's not have any notions about it being more power. That's just not true. Two strokes put out more power per CC, more power than four strokes. It's a fact. Let's take a second to talk about the reliability and how long these uh, two strokes and four strokes last. Uh, I'm gonna bring in my buddy Sam here and we're gonna talk about that for a little bit. You hear people talking about how two strokes aren't as, uh, they don't last as long not as, as a four stroke, right? And maybe are not as reliable. So we, we just kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, how, long, how long do you think is, is normal to be able to ride one of these two-stroke motors is it is it 100 hours 150 what do you think you know before before you put a piston in it obviously that all depends i mean you know if you're a really aggressive rider and ride on the power band um i think you, i would do you know 120 to 150 hours put a new piston in um but if you're just an average rider you actually i think could get away in fact i had my when i had my 250 xcw I had it for three years and I rode it for three years. I don't, didn't have an hour meter, so I don't know how, how you know, right. many hours I had on it, but I never put a top in it and I never felt like I had no power. Right. I, I had, uh, before this bike, it, I was on a 2012 300, a two stroke KTM 300, and I put 125 hours on it um, and I didn't feel any power loss. Um, if we compare that then to a, a four stroke, uh, what are the, some of the things? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna need to adjust valves, right? Especially oh. if you have titanium valves, they don't they don't sit as well as, as steel, so that they will, you have to adjust them a lot, which costs money and it or time if you if you do it yourself. Five years ago, when I was looking to get into dirt bikes more heavily, I contacted one of the people that I trust the most, one of the people that. Uh, has a ton of experience in, in dirt bikes, four strokes, two strokes, you name it, he's ridden the bike. And I asked him, what bike should I get? And he asked me, well, do you want to work on your bike or do you want to ride it? It was an honest question. He's had four strokes, he's had two strokes, he rides hard, he rides enduro, he rides off-road. <laughs> and, and it was kind of one of those things, and, and you could take that either way. What he was saying is, is uh, the four stroke, you may have to work on it a little bit more. The, the, the fact is with a four stroke, let's just be honest, there's maybe four times, maybe five times the moving parts in those motors. 
and uh, moving parts means things wear out. Yep. And so, yes, the four-stroke motors are amazing. Um, it, it, they rev higher. They rev higher than these two-stroke motors. That's something that a lot of people probably have a hard time wrapping their head around is that the yeah. modern four-stroke motor, let's just call it, what, 2002 onward. Well, the new, uh, the new KTM 350SX, I think, goes up to 13,000. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, and the, uh, the 250s, the, I, I've seen articles saying that they'll rev to 14,000. We're talking about a 250 four-stroke. Anytime something has that high a compression at that RPM range, you're wearing things down, and those motors are expensive. If you want to rebuild, your your four four stroke motor right. motor, you know, let's put the baseline at fifteen hundred and go on up from there. A lot of guys are doing what two thousand twenty two twenty three hundred dollars yep. to rebuild, you know, the top end of their four stroke motor. Whereas with this uh, with a two stroke, what fifty seventy seventy dollar piston. If you, uh, if, if, if you pay someone to do it, it'll be three hundred bucks. Yeah, fifteen dollar gasket kit, and you can do this in your garage for a hundred bucks. I guarantee it. Watch a YouTube video of someone doing it and you can do it yourself. I, I don't want to sound like I'm just a Debbie Downer on the four-stroke. The four-stroke motor is amazing. It's like a modern marvel. It's, it's, it's a masterful, you know, it's masterfully engineered. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's great for the sport. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's great for everybody to have. The thing is, and obviously with the four-stroke is... I think way back when, when they were more air-cooled and actually more like a two-stroke where they were super high compression, they lasted a lot longer. Uh, but these new 450s, like I actually am way nervous to recommend people, but compared to, to a two-stroke, is recommend people to go buy a used four-stroke. Because I don't care what anyone says, every single motor is a ticking time bomb. And you just need to to make a judgment. Do I, do I want to, you know, spend more in the long run or in the short term just every once in a while pop a new top in in there and, and a lot of times you don't need to you get a lot of guys will say oh i just do it at 150 hours just because and we hear that actually a lot and in reality they don't need to it's right. just dudes that they can do it because it's so easy yeah a lot of guys i know i know guys that have done 200 hours on a two-stroke piston on one of these modern you know ktms that's probably not the problem there is you might start to scar or you know your cylinder wall and different things money, um, and, and that that could be expensive but still you could replace the entire cylinder that your entire cylinder and your piston for less money than it does you know less money than what you do on a four stroke bike just to rebuild four strokes are just a little bit more expensive they're more expensive to buy you're paying for all that extra technology all that really expensive motor you know, motor development, you're paying for the EFI right now. <laughs> Two strokes may go to EFI later. Um, you're paying for the extra maintenance. You've got to worry about adjusting valves. There's just a few things that make that four stroke more expensive to, to initially purchase than a two stroke and more expensive to own long term than a two stroke. Now, if you're sponsored by the factory, then that's not a concern to you. Cost isn't an option. Or if you know a guy, you know, who owns a machine shop that can work on your motor, maybe not. Maybe that's not that big of a concern to you. But it is to me. Cost is a factor. It's a big factor. We've got to be fair. We've got to talk about something that the four-stroke does better than the two-stroke. It's in, it's in traction. The two-strokes suffer for traction as compared to a four-stroke. And where this, where this comes to play is on a either a motocross track, which I'm usually not on, or sometimes on a hill climb, which means what you tend to need to do on a two-stroke is shift up a gear. Now, that same trick works, the same trick works with a four-stroke, right? Yeah. But, but shifting up a gear, coming out of first gear, switching up to second on some of those gnarly loose hill climbs, that's what, that's what will kind of turn your two-stroke bike into, into the advantages that the four-strokes have with traction, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and the four-stroke, allows you to be lazy so a lot of guys like that as well is where you can be in the wrong especially the 450s you can be in the wrong gear and blow into a corner and pull out of it or the four stroke you can't but you know i'm kind of a purist and i love i love the intricacies of the dirt bike and trying to get better so if i blow in a corner and i'm not in the right gear that's my own fault and if i kill the bike which i've i've done a million times blowing into a corner 
um, it's just not, it's my, my own fault. So it, it helps me become a better rider in the end. Yeah, and you brought up another point. That's something that's something that happens sometimes with, with riders as they transition from four stroke over to two stroke is they'll end up coming too hot into a corner because they're used to being able to let off, let right. off the throttle on their four stroke bike and have a bunch of engine braking, which is good and bad. You know, just kind of depending on what, on what you want. But with your two-stroke bikes, you let off that gas and you won't have as much engine braking, and so you can you can tend to go, you know, too fast into the corner. You know, the two-stroke and the four-stroke will both have their advantages. And I think really where the four-stroke probably is a little bit better is like Kyle mentioned on the, in hill climbs or in, in uh, hard pack. But in the motocross world, um, they tend to just do a little bit better. You know, they have these big, huge triples and quad jumps that they're doing but in the end of the day you know how many people can really tap the true potential of a 450 uh you know i i know i can't it, so it it drove the cost up for everybody and i know a lot of magazines have talked about that is where you know four strokes they claim have ruined our uh, our sport for the common guys like us because of the it's so expensive uh you know like we can buy these these two strokes and I could actually ride this bike for 10 years yeah, and just continue to, you know, do the, the regular maintenance and stuff, but it would cost me way less. Whereas, you know, eventually with my four stroke, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, you know, pop a new motor in there. And, yeah. and, and at that point, it's going to be, that new motor is going to be worth more, you know, more than the entire bike. Yeah. So we've got a lot more to cover. There's a ton more topics we want to get into, but honestly, we've got to trim the video someplace, and this seemed like as good a place as any. We're about 10 minutes in. So this is the end of part one. Uh, keep watching for part two of this two-stroke versus four-stroke debate that we're having. Honestly, there's no right or wrong answer here. We love the four-strokes. We love the two-strokes. We just love the two-strokes a little bit more for the type of off-road riding that we like to do. If you're a motocrosser, if you are a supercrosser, then the four-stroke might be a better fit for you probably the 450 four stroke is probably more bike than you really need we'll get into that later um, but uh, anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you on part two